Chagas disease is an emerging public health threat in the United States. We recently started testing our blood supply in the U.S. for Chagas disease, and we found it popping up throughout the country in different donations. It is predominantly found in Latin America, but we do have it in the United States. We have the bugs and we have the parasite here. It's just not as common to encounter them in the environment in which we live in here in the U.S. The disease of Chagas is a parasitic disease that's only found in the Western Hemisphere. Um, it's a protozoa that uh, is a blood-borne pathogen that communicates from a vector, so uh, a bug called a uh, triatome or reduvic bug. It's a very large bug. It's not small, it's not microscopic. And um, patient, patients will fall asleep and the bug will then look for their prey. They feed off the patient. And so then they'll climb on the patient, usually when they're sleeping, and take a blood meal. Uh, there's anesthetic properties in the mouth so they don't feel it. And then as they walk away, they leave behind their feces, which has the trypanosome cruzi inside of it. Unfortunately for the diagnosis of Chagas, most people are asymptomatic, which is about 70% of the population who are infected with Chagas. It's only that smaller, the 20 to 30% population that progresses on to cardiomyopathy or um, colon or GI issues. After first being bitten or being exposed to triatomes, it could take up to 30 days to have symptoms. But usually within the first month, you'll start getting the first signs of Chagas, uh, acute Chagas. They'll have fevers. They can have Romana sign, which is uh, swelling of the eyes. Um, they can feel fatigue but that will later trend away and it's very nonspecific symptoms. Chronic can last lifelong or decades. So for the worst form of Chagas, it's chronic because the symptoms can range from cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, it can cause heart block. Um, depending on what strain of, of trypanosomes you're infected with, it can cause megacolon, megasophagus, it can cause sudden death because of the complete heart block. Unfortunately for the diagnosis of Chagas, most people are asymptomatic. So how would a healthcare provider know when to test someone? So if someone comes from a endemic population, and again, this is a Western Hemisphere parasite, and you're doing a normal health screening, and they had a history of a rural environment, then you have to start thinking about Maybe they had exposures to the reduvid bug or the vector of Chagas. And it would be just a simple serology you could test out. Because if they do have Chagas, you can do further testing to see if it's a false negative and treat them accordingly. It's not a contagion that you can't pass on through shaking someone's hand as a virus or a bacterial infection. Uh, it has to have a vector, the, the reduvid bug or like that passes it on through the feces of the bug into the blood of the patient. The other thing to think about is women who are in the maternal age, because if they can have children, Chagas is now mostly a vertical transmission disease. Moms are being infected and they're having their children here in the United States and they can transmit vertically from mom to child and the child will be born with Chagas. And you, they usually develop symptoms quicker, and also they have more severe outcome. My hope is that through the work of our task force, we are able to provide awareness about the disease to our healthcare providers and the general public so that people understand more about where and how to get help if they think they may have the disease. 
For more information, you can contact the Texas Chavez Task Force, and you can also contact the CDC for more information, or your local and state health departments can also help direct you. Thank mm -hmm. you.